chose from the book of Acts, there's a lot of, I've been reading some different scriptures, and I came across yeah. Wally when, when I chose this, when I came across it. And I, I've added some verses to it because it's, it's really powerful for us to understand. And it deals with a man named Apollos. I'm going to talk about him just in a minute, who he is and where he's from and what he did and what he didn't do. But if you would, go with me in prayer before I read this scripture. Most gracious Heavenly Father, before I read this scripture, I ask that you enable me to preach this word according to your will, according to the desires of the Spirit. He speaks to each one of us individually and collectively. Speak to me as I preach this sermon. May it be a blessing to each one of us to understand the truth of your word. I pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This is Paul's third missionary journey. It starts on chapter uh, 18. I'm going to start at verse 24. It's printed in your bulletin. It says, Now a Jew named Paulus, Alexander by birth, eloquent man, came to Ephesus, and he was mighty in the Scriptures. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. He was speaking and teaching accurately the things concerning Jesus, being acquainted only with the baptism of John. And he began to speak out boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and they explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wanted to go to Achaia, the brethren encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. And when he had arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. It happened that while Paulus was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus. He found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. There were in all about 12 men. Now in this text of Scripture, we have Apollos, which I, we don't talk about him a whole lot. If you remember, Apollos was mentioned in Corinthians because in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4, 5, and 6, it says this, When one says, I follow Paul, and another follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos, and what is Salt Paul, servants to whom you believed, as the Lord has signed to each? I planted Apollos water, but God gave the growth. The, conf- the confrontation was during the, the city of Corinth was the fact that there was a division going on between Paul's apostles, Apollos' apostles, and who, who listened to Jesus Christ. And they were, they were divided about this. Well, one of the things I looked up was about who pa- Apollos was. And I have a book at home that has all the names of men in the Bible in it. And I wrote down some things. And it says, Apollos was a great speaking Jew. We know that. He lived outside of Israel. He's re- well trained in the Old Testament. He's from Alexander. He's known for his educational centers. And it's also believed with where the great New Testament, which is set to it, was written. And many people believe, and many commentators believe, that. Paulus actually wrote the book of Hebrews. And I know some people think Paul did it. And I can understand why they think Apollos wrote it because Hebrews is not like any other letter that Paul wrote. But it doesn't matter who wrote it, it's still good. And in saying all that, the question is, what's the story behind, what's the story going on here? Well, we have Apollos, Apollos who the Bible says was an eloquent speaker. He was a good speaker. And says he came from Ephesus and he was mighty in the Scriptures. And says also he was fervent in spirit, a little s. Now, there was something he was lacking though. He had he had good abilities to preach, he had good abilities to teach, but he wasn't preaching the whole whole story. And because of that, there's weakness. Once I thought about this text of scripture, one of the things that's missing out of our lives sometimes is the power of the Holy Spirit working through our lives. You know, a lot of times we talk a lot about Jesus, we talk about God, but very little is known about the Holy Spirit among people, among believers, what He actually does for each one of us. And this text of Scripture I wrote, read this morning for you, it talks about, well, he's a fair, he's, He was strong in Scripture, He's fervent in Spirit, good in His words, but He wasn't indwelt by the Holy Spirit because He didn't know there was a Holy Spirit. He was baptized in the baptism of John, which was repentance. 
And so then Priscilla and Aquila, who were tent makers, by the way, husband and wife, came to him and heard the message he was speaking or teaching in a synagogue. And they didn't embarrass him and stop him and say, come on out, we've got to tell you this right now. I mean, we're going to tell you what we think right now because you're wrong. But they said, pulled him aside and said, you're not talking about Jesus the correct way. You don't know the full story. Well, we know that Paul Harvey used to say, now for the rest of the story. And we even say it sometimes in our phraseology when we talk to people. We say, you don't know all, you don't know all the story behind this. Well, Paulus didn't either, and he was lacking. But what he needed, he had to receive, and he received that when the, the gospel, full gospel, was presented to him. And that was that Jesus Christ. So he didn't know anything about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He just knew what John taught, that the Messiah was coming, that John was a forerunner of Christ. But he didn't know anything about the crucifixion and death and resurrection of Christ. Today, there's a lot of believers that are believing with their minds, but they never received Jesus in their hearts. And the reason being is the work in the heart has to be done by God. It's not done by us. Notice it says that once the way of God was was explained to him more accurately, there was something happened. When he went into Achaia, he helped those who understood by the grace of God. They understood, he understood the grace. When a person becomes a believer in Jesus Christ, God does a work in their heart. You can read the Bible from cover to cover. You can be in church all your life and not understand the workings of the Holy Spirit in your life or my life. Sometimes we try to be more religiously right than we do spiritually right. And say the the problem is with Paulus was he was a good man and he he meant well, but he wasn't, and he he say all the right words, but there's no power in the words. And then when you read on down what Paul did, when Paul went, Paul went to Ephesus, he asked them, he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So Apollos was just like these people were. They heard about John's baptism. They, they were baptized maybe by John, but they weren't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. You notice when we baptize people today, we say you're baptized. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three are involved. But a lot of times in our personal lives, we don't think about the Spirit and how He works on, our day, on a day-to-day basis. We pray to God the Father, but how often do we talk to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to enable us to do the things we can't do? One of the things that we, we fail to understand is we read this text of Scripture is we say, well, if the Holy Spirit says right here, they started speaking in tongues and started prophesying. We don't do that. doesn't mean we can't do that if God wanted us to do it. You know, sometimes I think we forget that there's a lot of people in the world that can't speak our language, and God uses mighty miracles of speaking in tongues and prophesying the Word of God to people who don't know how the Word before them. We have the complete Bible in front of us every day of our lives, if you have a Bible in your house, and most of you do. But how many times during the day do we pick up the God, God's Holy Word and let the prophecy of Scripture speak to us and tell us what, we're, what we need in our lives? and who we need in our lives. You know, the Bible tells us walk in the Spirit, not walk in the flesh. Well, as Christians, if we're, in, if we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we have a choice. We listen to the Holy Spirit or we listen to the, the flesh. And most of us, if we're honest, we spend more time walking in the flesh than we do the Spirit. We want the flesh to be fulfilled for we want the Spirit to be fulfilled. And that's why we have less power to witness as we should have because... One of the things that God enabled the Holy Spirit to do for us was empower the Holy Spirit for us to do was to bring us to the point where we can witness for Jesus Christ. And sometimes I wish He'd enable me to speak clearer. Y'all didn't get that. Because my speaking sometimes, you know, this sermon, when I prayed about this sermon this morning, there are days that I have trouble getting words out. But one of the things I've learned... Terry needs to preach about Jesus Christ, Him crucified, and tell, and tell you that each one of us needs to understand that we can't just come to church on Sunday morning and we can't just hear a sermon and think that's all we need for the week. One of the things that in this text of Scripture, He was doing the right thing and the people were listening to Him, but there was no power in what was going on. God enables us through His Holy Spirit to do the things that we think we can't do. There are times in our lives that Jesus Christ reveals himself through the day-to-day workings of, of other people. And we miss it. 
There are times that, day, that Jesus Christ reveals Himself in not just the Bible, but in day-to-day circumstances that we encounter, and we miss it. When this, this whole text was about what is it they missed, and I'm afraid what we miss in the, in the religious world today in, in Christianity is the fact we forget that we've been empowered by God to do the things that we're, we say we can't do. The Holy Spirit came also to, to teach us, to allow us to be taught things that we didn't know before. Mike and I were talking this morning. He shared with me something he'd learned from the book of Joshua. The Holy Spirit, I think, revealed that to him. He reveals little simple things to us sometimes, things that we didn't think about before. You can, If you read just the Scripture itself, you say, well, it says it right here, that's good. But also, what does it mean to you personally? What does it mean to me personally? Because the Holy Spirit works in our lives in a, all kinds of different ways. He enables us by gifting us with gifts of the Spirit to be used to edify the church. He gives us the ability to know truth from lies. How many of you in this room understand what it means to know truth from lies? Because the lies come from the enemy that feeds our flesh. The flesh, a lot of times, will tell us something that's not biblical. Flesh will tell us sometimes things that we like to rationalize in our own minds, but it's not what God says. And when that happens, we get led astray. Another thing the Holy Spirit does is puts us on the right path. He directs us because He's wisdom. He's wisdom from above. He's wisdom from within. The more you study the Scriptures, the more you seek to understand what God is saying to you personally, not just reading a text so you can instruct people, but what does it mean to you personally? How do I take what I just read and how do I deal with it in my personal life? Paulus was a good man, but he lived in a city that was highly educated, Alexander. It's known for his libraries, volumes, thousands and thousands of volumes of books. They were highly educated people in that area. And he was educated, but yet he lacked. You know, last night I was watching, I told Mike I was watching another part of The Chosen, season three, I think it's part, I watched three, four, and five. And one of the things I get from watching that movie, and I was a lot of talk about it, and all the women are doing their Bible study in it. But Jesus was a simple man with simple pleasures, but he had one mission, and that was to tell people about the grace of God. That was his mission. Not just, and his healings, even his healings, he didn't heal everybody. He healed those that needed to be healed for a purpose. Sometimes the day we doubt because someone doesn't get healed, we think, well, it must be something wrong because they're not being healed and their faith must be weak. That's not true. Jesus Christ allows each one of us to go through things, and that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. He enables us to go through the difficult times in our lives. There's not a person in this room who can't say or attest to the fact there have been difficult times they've gone through in their life, but God saw them through it, and He will see you through it because He's already called you to go through that time of testing and trial that you go through. He enables us to love other people that's unlovable sometimes. The Bible tells us He's poured out love in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Hope comes from Him. But the love that we're talking about is an agape love. It's not love that you just kind of manufacture on your own. It's a fact when you love like the Holy Spirit loves that person. You know, a lot of times we forget one of the things the whole Scripture is about from Genesis to Revelation is about the love of God for people. When the Holy Spirit indwells us, we have that same desire in our hearts, or we should have the same desire in our hearts to love other people, even people we disagree with politically or people we deal with religiously or whoever it may be, we have disagreements with, we still love them because God loves them. That's one of the things we forget sometimes in Christianity. The reason Christianity is not as powerful as it should be in the world we live in is because it's not guided by the Holy Spirit. It's guided by political views and flesh. And I'm afraid the world we live in has become more divided before Christ comes back. And that's the mission of the church. The mission of the church is to listen to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide them and direct them on the path they should take and not what the path of the world says we should take. Because if you don't understand that more division is taking place in our world today than it's ever taken place, and it's going to be even greater later on. But also, as I told Mike, one of the things I, I saw and I see coming, and I hope you believe this as well, God's got to answer. He's working right now. He's working in my life. He's working in your life. To thin out those things that's not important and show you what's really important. I can't answer for you. I don't know what you experience in a day-to-day operation at, at your house or your business, the place where you work. But He empowers us to live this Christian life. And the Christian life is not something that we take for granted because God's working a sanctification. He's, working, he's sanctifying us by doing a process in our lives 
He's peeling back layer by layer in our lives to get us where He wants us to be. Do you ever thank God for the difficulties and trials in your life? You should. Because if you listen to the Holy Spirit, He wants us to thank Him for the, what the trials are in our lives because it's through, the, through those trials we'll agree with Him that He's going to work through us to enable us to get through those trials and have faith to stand stronger than we stood yesterday. Do y'all believe that church? You know, a lot of times we think church is about coming to church, singing songs, saying a prayer, listening to a sermon, and going home. It is physically. But spiritually, what it, what it should be doing for us is enabling us to think about what I say through the Scripture and what the Scripture says to us individually and what the Holy Spirit speaks to us after we leave His building and helps us become the people He's called us to be because, like I said last week, we're all chosen by Almighty God. We believe the gospel when it's read to us, preached to us, spoken to us. We believe what was said, and God did his work in our hearts. And he didn't leave us as orphans. He stayed with us. He came in our hearts. He empowered us through his grace, through his foreknowledge. All those things that he did for us to make us the people he wants us to become. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians, if you watch what on television, people call themselves Christians will say terrible things about other people that disagree with them. You ever notice that? The very people when they have the National Day of Prayer that pray together, talk like they hate each other. I don't know if you ever noticed that or not. But one of the things the Holy Spirit does, He unites us as one. We don't have to agree with every person, but we don't have to hate other people either. We can show the love of Christ. We can show the love of grace and give them the same grace that God gave us when we were wrong. But we don't want to do that. Because the flesh gets in the way and we say, no, it's, not, it's going to be my way, it's going to be the highway. It shouldn't be that way. It should be God directing us, leading us to the, down that road that leads to more grace, more love, more mercy in our lives so we can show that same love, that grace and mercy to other people in their life. When these people receive Jesus Christ and are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the power is given to them to do these things I'm talking about. We have the same power. How often do you think about the power that you have within you? How often do you think about the person who lives in you, the person of Christ, through the Spirit? He lives within, within us. Not only about you, but one of the things He does not, is convict us. Start with, He convicts us of our sin to get us to the cross. But then He also convicts us on a day-to-day basis where we're wrong. We make the wrong decisions. Sometimes we go ahead and make decisions without asking. Then we suffer the consequences of those actions. When he, we felt this little unction within us saying, don't say that, don't do that, don't go there. You ever heard that before? That's God's Spirit speaking to you. It's not just words in your head. And it's not necessarily always in your head either, it's in your heart. You know, I hear people say, God spoke to me here, God spoke to me there, God told me this, God told me that. I haven't met many people though really that I've personally talked to that God spoke to them audibly. I'm not saying He can't. But He does speak to us inside our hearts. Our mind, will, and emotions. That's where we, He speaks to us. It, it enables us to do that. When you look at this power I'm talking about, it's a power that's untapped. We don't tap into it like we should. It's available for each one of us. But have you tapped into it? Have I tapped into it? Have I believed that I've received it? Have you believed that you've received the gift of the Holy Spirit? You say, well, I hadn't spoken in tongues and I hadn't prophesied. No, but do you love people that's unlovable? Do you forgive people easier than you used to forgive people? Do you show mercy and kindness to people that don't show mercy and kindness to you? Are you guided and are you directed by the Holy Spirit and God's Word or are you directed by what the world tells you to believe? That's how you know if you have the Spirit living in you because the Spirit's always correcting you, guiding you, sanctifying you, peeling away layers from you, making you more like Jesus Christ. That's why this, the Christian life is really exciting if you think about it. You're never the same as you were yesterday. And the question is, do you want to be the same as you were yesterday? Because if you do, I hate to tell you this, in Christ, He won't leave you alone. He won't leave you alone. While he's talking about preachers doubt, I've read a lot of articles before in books. A lot of preachers had trouble with doubt before. Even I've had trouble with doubt. When things go wrong, things go difficult, I doubt God too, asking why. But those times are good. Spiritual dryness, all of us have in our lives. And we have spiritual dryness in our lives, we go back to the Word. And even though we don't feel like reading it, we read it, but we know you'll find something out. God will empower you through not just a word, but through a situation you find yourself in or someone comes to you that you don't even care anything about and they'll, they'll give you a word. 
And it may not be a word from the Scripture, but maybe something that you've been t- thinking about and maybe someone you don't like. God uses all kinds of ways and all kinds of people to reach you. But will you listen? Will I listen? Because God has a source. His source is the Holy Spirit. And He wants us to receive it. He received it by faith in Jesus Christ, in His blood that was shed for us. But not just that. He rose from the grave and He's alive today. And He lives within each and every believer. Doesn't matter what color their skin is. Doesn't matter what their nationality is. All that matters is He lives within them. That will bring us back together again. And that's the message the church should be preaching. Empowered by the Holy Spirit is a real thing. And we don't focus on it enough. Except maybe on the day of Pentecost. Father, we thank You for Your Word this morning. I pray I didn't do diligence in preaching this Word. I know my language has been choppy this morning. But I pray You take the words that I've spoken. And You use those words to touch one heart any heart, my heart, any person's heart in this room to help us be the people you called us to be, to enable us to enjoy the life we have with your Son, Jesus Christ, as we walk this earth when the darkness all is all around us and we think things are difficult and trying. But yet, Father, you're sovereign in our lives. For that, we give you thanks. If someone here doesn't know who you are and never received you as their Lord and Savior, we pray today be the day. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.